Welcome to the Black Country Business Podcast, where you're your coaches in business success, Lewis Hayden and Andy Hemming. So today, something a little bit differently. I'm going to be wearing the hat of the business owner, whilst Andy wears the hat of the business coach, and we're going to ask some real challenging questions. Six challenging questions that every business owner wants to say to a coach. Today, it's business owner versus coach. Welcome to the Black Country Business Podcast, everybody. And today we've got a special episode. Episode 13 is going to be a special one. And what we're going to do is something different today. We're going to turn the tides on the business coach. So I'm a business coach as well. Lewis Hayden speaking here. And we've got Andy Hemming there as well, who's been a a business coach for a few more years than me, Andy. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm also a business owner. So today, I'm going to be the business owner, and you're going to be the business coach, and we're going to have a bit of a battle, Andy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask some questions that rewind to me like 12 years ago when I was a business owner without a coach. I'm going to use that mindset of what I had then and ask some questions to you um, about why I would need a business coach and what your thoughts are on it. So are you up for this, Andy? So I'm I'm not going to hold back here. I'm going to be real brutal with you here Andy so let's go <laughs> I hope you're ready. bring it on <laughs> okay then so let's go for it round one so what can you tell me about my business Andy that I don't already know nothing and that's not the point you see I think this is a, a point of confusion for quite a lot of business owners when they think about coaching. They they probably confuse it a bit with consulting and a consultant will come in and tell you all about your business and try to make assumptions about your particular business. But that's not what coaching is about. You see, for me, there's nobody better um, to understand your business than you. But what we do find with a lot of businesses that we work with is they've written a bit of a story about them. Everybody has a story about their business. So, for instance, my uh, the tire wholesaler that I worked with for a while, he said, there's no loyalty in this game. So I went, so none of your customers phone you up first. He went, yeah, of course they do. I said, well, that sounds like loyalty, doesn't it? So you see, the the thing is, we've all written a story about our business and we all understand our business and the market that we operate in. But that's not the point, because, you see, in the most part, let's take a plumber, for example, a a great plumber will start a plumbing business. So they're great at plumbing, but they're not great at business. Now, what we do is we take your knowledge of plumbing and put it alongside our knowledge of growing a business. And by fusing those two things together what we do is we start to create a really good quality business instead of a really good quality plumber. Okay. So I'm a plumber. Um, You've never owned a plumbing business before. So how would you know what to coach me on? Right. So you're a plumber. Do you need customers? Yes. Okay. So then we could probably talk some about marketing and sales. You're a plumber. Would you prefer to be the owner of a plumbing business? Yeah, that's what I mean. But I am the owner. I am the owner. Okay. And how much plumbing are you doing right now? Yeah, about 40 hours a week. Right. So how much time (laughs) are you spending being the owner? Oh, okay. Because you see, there's a different mindset to being the owner of a business. Because what does the owner of a business do? The owner of a business makes sure the business runs, not runs for the business. So it's about essentially, you know, turning you into a business owner, which is about learning about um, managing people, building systems, making objective decisions, not doing stupid, as I call it. Um, So pulling you out of the weeds so you can actually see what's happening in your business to stop the roller coaster that will invariably happen if you're buried down doing the work of the business. Okay. 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 Let's go for question two then. Round two. Coaching. This won't work in my business. And if you go into it with that attitude, then you're probably right. <laughs> um, the, the thing for me is, you know, 
we're part of Action Coach. Action Coach has been around for 27 years now. We're in 90 countries. There's 2,000 coaches. We've worked with tens of thousands of businesses. And the business growth system that we apply is the best in the world. How do we know that? Because we're still here after 27 years working with tens of thousands of businesses in over 90 countries. So the point is, you see, I mentioned this story that we all write about our business, and that's all about the complexities and differences within, oh, my business is different. How many times have I heard that? No, every business is the same because every business needs customers. Every business needs to serve the customers profitably on a consistent basis. Otherwise, it will run out of cash. So the point really is about you know, teaching, um, teaching you to manage and run those things successfully. Well, that's like what the question was. <laughs> this won't work in my business is what I said. But to be honest, my comeback was going to be, well, my business is very niche, but then you also said in that, that statement there that, look, yeah, it is about getting, every business is going to need sales. Every business needs to know the same sort of principles. So you beat me to my comeback, Andy. So I've got nothing to come back on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, every business is built on the same platform, isn't it? What we do is we get tied up in the internal workings of the business because we think about the sausage factory rather than the customer experience and what makes the business work. What makes the business work consistently? Consistent leads coming into the business, consistent sales to convert those leads, consistent customer experience of making the sausage machine work consistently so that people get the same experience every time they deal with you, profitably with a cash collection that works. That's what keeps the cycle of business working. Now, no business is different to that. It's just the inside of the sausage machine is a bit different. That's all. Okay. Round three. You ready for this one? Mm. So you've there told me all this stuff around coaching, and it all seems like to fit into my uh, 40, 50-hour, 60-hour week already, how am I going to find time to do this when I'm already really busy, already really busy at the moment? Yeah, that's a common one, isn't it? And the first question that I'd ask is, you know, just how much stupid are you doing? And what I mean by that is, look, if we think about the operational stuff in our business, the business of the business, how much would you really have to pay somebody to do that? Because very rarely is that more than a 10 to 15 quid an hour job. Right? So if you're doing the 10 to 15 quid an hour jobs in your business, who's sitting in the MD's chair? Now, for me, the big thing about this is, yeah, but my customers, blah, 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 blah. Who's your most important customer? Most important customer is you because you're the only person in your business you can't replace right now. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Right, you've, you're probably serving a couple of roles in your business. Number one, you might be on the tools or whatever it is working in the operation. Number two, you should be the MD. I'd ask you how much time you're sitting in that chair. Number three, you might be the shareholder of that business. Now, as the shareholder of that business, what would you be looking for? Return on your investment, future value, growth. Now, let me ask you this. As your um, shareholder is the most important customer, you're the one they're serving. You're the one, the only one that can't be replaced right now. If you were to just sit in the, the shareholder chair for your business and look at you performing as the MD, would you hire yourself? Would you be backing yourself to deliver that future value that you're looking for as the shareholder? Or would you be looking for a better MD? Because you see, what we're there to do is pull you out of the stupid and get you focused on being the MD and serving your most important customer. And what normally happens as a result of that is we stop you putting out all the fires in the business, which is the operational stuff. And by the way, if those fires ever go out, you haven't got a business. But the point is you can pay somebody a lot less than you to do them and to put them out for you and to do all the operational stuff. So we can not only free up your time, but we can free up your time and grow your business. Okay. So round four, you've mentioned hiring people. You've mentioned hiring you as a coach as well as an Alfred in this business. What's it going to cost me? 
Well, there's a whole range of different programs available, aren't there? Um, starting at sort of 50 quid a month. And if people can't be investing 50 quid a month in their own business education, then um, I would sort of be a little bit concerned because at the end of the day, you know, I, I quite often use driving as an analogy here. And um, when you get in a car, you have to have driving lessons. Um, until you've got a driving license, you're only allowed in the car on your own with a competent instructor. You're not allowed to put passengers in the car and drive them somewhere until you've got a license. Because you see, at the end of the day, you're in charge of this vehicle to transport you between one place and another, and hopefully at speed. Now, if you don't have driving license, uh, driving lessons, you can't go anywhere at speed because you can't get on the motorway and chances are you're going to stall the car. So why is your business any different? It's a vehicle to transport you, hopefully the faster the better, between where you are now and where you want to be. The more competent you are at driving your business, the faster you can get there. Remember, you've got passengers in your business. They're called your team. Now, how safe do you think your passengers feel right now if you're doing all the stupid in your business? Now, for me, the thing is, why wouldn't you be investing in your business education the same as you invested in learning to drive a car, to do it safely and competently and be able to drive faster? So that's the first part. So 50 quid is the entry level which is starting you on your business education. Now, we, of course, we go up through thousands of pounds to get to one-to-one -one coaching. But the point is, you know, how quickly do we take our fee off the table by actually focusing on what needs to happen in your business rather than what is happening in your business? How many businesses do you think we get our fee off the table within a couple of months just by identifying the low hanging fruit that's already sitting there. You know, just ask yourself this as a business owner, do your customers know everything that you do? And are they, you know, if you thought about the, their wallet share, the amount of money that they spend with people like you and then your share of their wallet, how much opportunity is there, there for you? How much opportunity is there by finding out what, work, what is working in your business and what isn't working in your business to just grow your profit by focusing on more of the stuff that does work? So you see, just by doing some simple things, business coaching becomes free very quickly because we'll make you the additional profit that you're going to invest in coaching within the first couple of months of being on the program. And after that, it's just about business growth. Okay. So next question then. So this is from me as a business owner. I know business owners have been there a long, a lot longer than I have, but I've been in business of my own firm for 15 years, Andy. And I also see myself as quite successful because it's a, a couple of million pounds that my business turns over. So I'm already successful. Why do I need to have someone like you coach me? There's a number of good reasons, isn't there? I mean, at the end of the day, just take it out of the context of business and think about a sports team. When a sports team gets to the top of the league, do they sack their coach? The answer is no. That's one reason. The second reason is this. At any one point in time, we have a set of beliefs about who we are, where we are in the world, what our place in the world is, all that kind of stuff. Now, um, we do a process called alignment on our one-to-one -one coaching programs. One of the first things we do is start to get people to define their personal goals, which interestingly, not many people have done. And when they start to think about personal goals, they set their goals based on their current set of beliefs about what they think is possible. And what we tend to find is as people go forward in their coaching program, they start to believe other stuff is possible. Now, um, just imagine what your life could be because most people think about what their life is or the life they had before they grew a successful business. So all of this stuff is based on um, 
preconceived ideas and largely a, a lot of self-sabotage. And for me, the, the, the biggest opportunity is to have somebody challenge you and not only challenge you, but show you the path to how it could be completely different. You know, when, when you get somebody um, starting on a coaching program who's working 50, 60 hours a week and they say they'd like to work four days a week because that's what they believe is possible. And after one year, they can run their business in one hour a week. You know, surely it's time for better goals. So um, why not even as a successful business? Is it possible to be more successful? Yeah. And if you thought about an unlimited amount of time and money, what would you be doing differently with your life? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's some thoughts going on there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this all sounds really cool. Um, so what results can I expect and when? Largely, that's down to you. Because you see, for me, there's, there's two things here. People who come and sit around our coaching table are obviously open to challenge, which is brilliant. But they also have to be open to change. Now, lots of people are open to challenge, but aren't quite so open to change. So what that means is we can talk to them about doing stuff and they know it makes sense, but they choose not to do it because they prefer to do stuff the way they've always done it. Now, it's really interesting because at some point they choose to do the stuff that we talk about. Some people do it really fast. Some people don't. They still have the courage to sit around the table and be challenged. And when they do eventually make the decision to do the stuff that we've talked about with them, they go, I wish I'd done that some months ago, which is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> so, so the point I'm is, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> So the point is this, you see, um, when can you expect results? Well, that's down to you. But what we do know, as I've already mentioned, is, you know, we have the best business growth system in the world, right? So um, the level at which you choose to get results is only constrained by the level of action that you take based on the discussions that we have. You know, we've got great examples. The, the, the 50 hours a week to one hour a week is a live example. That's what's happened for a client this year. You know, in one year, they've gone from 50 hours a week in their business to being able to run that business in one hour a week. And the business has grown by 50% and the profit percentage has grown by 100%. So, so turn over 100 quid now rather than 50 quid. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking millions, aren't we? We are talking millions, yes. Um, but the point is, you know, how much potential has that now opened up for growth? Because if you go back to my point about who's your most important customer and sitting as the shareholder, looking at you as the MD running that business, who do you think is running that business most effectively? The person working 50 hours a week doing the operations of the business or the person working one hour a week running that business and thinking about that business for the rest of the time? I wonder. Why do you think the growth happens at the pace it does? Because they have space to think about how to make it happen. What do you mean by space? Well, look, I mean, I, I, I very often ask clients, you know, when you're working down on the shop floor or on the tools in your business, how many great ideas do you have about growing the business? And the answer is none because they're busy doing the stuff. They go, you know, when you're on holiday lying on your sunbed just by the side of the pool, how many great ideas do you have about growing your business? And they go, I have loads. I go, well, wouldn't it be better to be spending more time on a the sunbed then? They're being a bit facetious, but that's space, isn't it? Not doing stuff, thinking about stuff. You know, at the end of the day, we have an equation that we talk about B times two equals half. B is born out of our beliefs and our skills and essentially thinking because thoughts create actions and actions create results. The better the quality of our thoughts, the better the quality of our actions and the better the quality of our results. And I guarantee that if you're doing stupid stuff, the quality of your actions is low and the quality of your results is low. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't had more questions, by the way, but it's really interesting what you just said there. And I'm, I'm sitting here uh, reflecting on what you're saying, Andy, because 
um, as as I mentioned, I, I well, I am a client of you because I'm always a big believer that why would you ever not need a coach? Because there's always another level to go to. So um, when I first sat opposite the table and met you um, before I was a client, these were the questions that was going through my head that I needed some clarity on um, that was stopping me from moving forward. So it's really interesting what you've said here because I'm I'm just sitting here going that's where I was and the things you've just mentioned has changed my life and my business and the employees that work for that business and the customers we deal with. So yeah, it's, these, these are just seeds that have planted at that time that have made a massive difference. So thank you uh, for covering there's that. A, there's another really important point though, isn't there? You see, because, and I t- sort of take you back to one of the first questions you asked about what can you tell me about my business that I don't already know? Yeah. Well, Let's just flick that one over for a second because, and I mean, this one is to you, but it's probably to a lot of the people listening to this as well. How many businesses have you grown? Me. As a business owner? One, right? Yeah. One. So how many businesses have I grown as a coach? Oh, hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Hundreds, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hundreds of businesses. So, um, from a, an experience of business, you know, as a business owner in your business, you have the experience of your business. Mm-hmm. I have the experience of hundreds of businesses. As a coach. As a coach. Yeah. Now, the point is, you know, um, the, the level of um, relationship that we have with our clients, we understand the intricacies of their business as well as they do, sometimes better. The other thing is we don't buy their story, right? There's no loyalty in this game. I don't buy that story. Um, Yeah, they're they're just words that are just passed through the grapevine, aren't they, within in that industry? We couldn't possibly charge that because dot 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 excuse. How do you know? When did you last try? So for me, you know, all of this stuff is about um, if you've got experience of growing a couple of hundred businesses. Surely there's got to be some valid stuff in there to help you grow one. And that's the really important point for me, you know. Absolutely. And yeah, remember, I mean, we grow our own business as well. That's it, as a coach, yeah. Without doing stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a, I take my business owner hat off now for the podcast and put the coaching hat back on. You're absolutely right, yeah. The amount of businesses that I see that I'm coaching and um, how we all just like these principles relate to over them. Yeah. I absolutely agree with the, the things that you've just mentioned there. So anyway, this isn't about us, it's about the listeners. And so I hope you got some good value from these guys. Uh, and, and look, the reason for this podcast is to get you thinking a little bit differently as well, because like Andy said, you know, those thoughts that you have and the time that you take out by listening to this podcast can make different actions for you in your business just by listening to what we're talking about. So if anything sparked up from today, just one thing, we call that a blinding flash of the obvious, a BFO. What BFOs have you had from today that can move your business forward and what sort of actions can you take from what Andy's just been talking about? Um, And also, are you holding yourself back by having those beliefs that I was as a stubborn business owner? Um, Where could you be in two years' time, if he was doing these actions consistently. Anything else to add, Andy? I can see yeah, you. <laughs> yes. For me, you this- still think we're in the rounds. The rounds are finished, by the way, now. It's, it's just talking. <laughs> but for me, this is really important because, see, um, I mean, the reason for these questions is because most people don't understand coach, and that's okay. Uh, um, but for me, the point is this. When you went into business, you probably wanted to be more successful, have more time, make more money. And most people get lost somewhere along the way and end up with working more hours, sometimes for less money. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way. Now, um, we wouldn't have the business that we have if it didn't work, right? And lots of smart business owners wouldn't stay on their coaching program. You know, you're 10 plus years. Yeah. Yeah. they wouldn't stay on a coaching program if it didn't work because no smart business owner pays money for something they don't get return on investment on. That's right. So as the business owner, 
or more importantly, as the shareholder of your business, looking down at you as the MD of your business and all the people that are in your vehicle, whose lives you're responsible for. By the way, we talk bluntly when we coach, open and honest conversations. Don't you just owe it to yourself to find out whether this might help you or not? And if the answer's not, that's fine, but at least you know. But how many times have you thought I know about something and then found yourself to not be correct? That's the thought I'm going to leave you with. Interesting. Cheers, Andy.